Things of that nature for Martin Short. If he has half a sniff at passing Bobby Verdon Row, he'll make a move again. And he has closed on Verdon Row. And he's now looking to be in a position to make a challenge as they come over the line. This time he's much, much closer. Verdon Row rushing down to the first corner. Onto the brakes they go. Verdon Row with his arm out of the window. And that is because he can see the green and yellow chequered flags which are being brought out to force the field to bring themselves under control. Imaginary pace car situation while the errant number seven machine of George Purdy is dragged out of the gravel. So through they all come, slowing down, no overtaking, dropping off the racing pace. Bobby Verdon Rowe leading now a fairly sizable crocodile as the others have caught up to them during the course of the lap. So Verdon Rowe must make a good restart now. He has the advantage at least of being in front of Martin Short, but he really must make the best possible use of that as they hurtle down to the first corner. Short flicks on the lights, main beam no doubt. Verdon Rowe's having none of that intimidatory tactics though, takes his line. Short second, McKellar third, Campbell Walter right with them in fourth place, then Flux in fifth. This is very close indeed, the black car behind them, Steve Gullialmi, then Phil Hindley, the number 75, the silver machine. And again as they come past the back straight pits, nothing to choose between this top group. The time is running out for Martin Short. Bobby Verdon Rowe in the lead will be making doubly certain he doesn't leave any doors even partially ajar. He doesn't want Short to have a chance of doing anything desperate. So around they come. Very, very close together, this lead quartet. And once more, they've dropped in Flux, and Flux is under pressure. Flux under pressure from Phil Hindley. And in fact, word comes through that Ian Flux is a judge to have jumped the restart. And Flux will be dropped down the order. No matter where he finishes, he'll have a time penalty to contend with as well. Ian Flux, this is not his day. But it may be Bobby Verdon Rose yet. He's eked out a margin to the chequered flag in race two. So now it's honours even between Verdon Rowe and Short. Croft for race three, the third leg of the ninth round of the TVR Tuscan Challenge. Bobby Verdon Rowe sits at the front of the grid ahead of Martin Short. Short and Verdon Rowe have each led to the chequered flag in one phase of this race. Peter Wheeler hasn't, but then I'm sure he doesn't mind because he's the boss. And right behind him there, championship leader Ian Flux. Well, a little bit of bumping and boring at the start. The yellow flags wave, but the front rows get away cleanly. Bobby Verdon Rowe leads from Martin Short into third place with a very good start goes Jamie Campbell Walter. Number 10, Steve Hyde in trouble on the outside. Will he recover from that? He may well do. This is the view across Bobby Verdon Rowe's front wings. Verdon Rowe leading around this first lap of the Croft circuit. Very crossed up under braking, but that's not under braking. He's been thumped up the back by Martin Short. For the second time in the afternoon, Verdon Rowe has been punted out of the race by the number 88 machine. And this time he will not have second place. He rejoins right at the back of the densely packed TBR Tuscan field. Well, Martin Short now under threat from Jamie Campbell Walter. Looking back from Peter Wheeler's car. Wheeler right in the middle of the pack here. Martin Short leading then. Jamie Campbell Walter down to third place because Phil Hindley, the 75 silver machine, has come up into second. Burden Row picks up a place. Now he's a man on a mission. And this young man who's raced in single seaters and touring cars has really found a home for himself here. In the TVRs, the helpful hand out of the window there from Nigel Tustain in number 11, showing to BVR that I know you're there and please kindly go past me on that side. 
Well, through go the leaders. And here comes Bobby Bird and Row. Bird and Row really a man on a mission now. And so too is Phil Hindley, and his mission is to hold on to second place at the moment under intense pressure from Ian McKellar. Jamie Campbell Walter in fourth place, sitting and watching at the moment. Martin Short having to sacrifice his racing line desperately here because Phil Hindley is as close as you can possibly get without actually making contact. Riding with Burden Row, another big gaggle of cars ahead of him. Through comes Short and then Hindley almost being pushed along at this stage by Ian McKellar. Jamie Campbell, Walter right with them. Bobby Verdon Rowe driving a very strong recovery race. There's 55, Mark Preston's car damaged in the second race and back out now after some sterling work by the team. And he's right in this group that Bobby Verdon Rowe is now trying to work his way through. Hindley side by side with McKellar. Oh, and it's a big accident. McKellar on the outside, spat off the curbs and across the road. While he's reversing out of the way, that's about all he can do. And Ian Flux caught up in that one somehow. Oh dear, what a disaster for Ian Flux. He is not having good fun here at all. And look at this, it's now pouring with rain. A sudden deluge as Martin Short leads them through. Jamie Campbell Walter in second and everybody now will be really tippy-toeing around. These Dunlop control slick tires have no grip at all on this wet road. Spinner already. Martin Crass right behind Peter Wheeler. There he is in the 21 machine. And Grant Troman's in the barriers there. He's rejoining, but he'll be a long way down as well. And all the drivers having to be very, very circumspect. I wonder how long this rain will continue. It seems to be moderately dry at the end of the straight there. Wipers still flailing on the windscreens. Bobby Vernon Rowe still trying to make up places. Well, Vernon Rowe fighting his way through this group. Oh dear, and they're helping him. Steve Hyde in a spin. Took off somebody else there out of our side as well. And oh dear, a ferocious waltz for Matthew Kelly in 22. Absolute deluge on this side of the circuit. Almost dry still on stop. It's like going onto a skid pan. Just at the change of surface there. Absolutely soaking. And Peter Wheeler caught out just like everybody else. Well, the red flag flies and I'm hardly surprised. Absolutely appalling rainstorm right in the middle of the race. Well, what do the TVRs have to do here at Croft to have a race without a restart? They're ready to go again though. A restarted race gets underway. A short, sharp shower, just enough to scare the living daylights out of everybody on their slick tyres. And what a good start for Jamie Campbell-Walter. He leads from Phil Hindley. And this is Bobby Verdon Rowe. Verdon Rowe with it all to do again. And now everybody is so much closer together that it'll be a shorter distance to the front of the field, but with many fewer gaps between the cars. He really will have to be Quite enthusiastic about his overtaking. Phil Hindley under pressure. Around the outside of him goes Gavin Cooper in the number nine. Ian Flux there in the middle of the field. And this is Martin Short right at the back having restarted, not from the grid, from the front of the grid when he was leading. He should have taken that position at the restart, but he restarted from the pits. Now into the lead goes Gavin Cooper. Cooper showing an amazing change of form here, really getting a shake on. Dives past Jamie Campbell-Walter, Campbell-Walter into second, and out of the race goes Phil Hindley, or out of control at least. Hindley spun out there, and Peter Wheeler's camera showing the sheen on the road. It's still not entirely dry, and these guys are still on their slicks. So number nine, Gavin Cooper leads. Third place still is Ian McKellar. Rod Gretton fourth, Grant Tromans in fifth place. There is Peter Wheeler, the number eight machine. Right in the middle of a very ferocious dice. 55, Mark Preston, the man who's chasing him in his rebuilt car. Gavin Cooper leads it though from Jamie Campbell-Walter.
Still third place for McKellar. Then Gretchen Grant Tremens has dropped down a slot because Bobby Verdon Rowe has already worked his way up to fifth. And now he's chasing down Rod Gretchen. Well, is it beyond the bounds of possibility that Bobby Verdon Rowe could actually win this race? Certainly he's got the bit between his teeth. Rod Gretchen gesturing. That was either please go past or go away, not quite sure which. Gretchen decides that instead of being passed by Verdon Rowe, he will rub shoulders with McKellar. Verdon Rowe goes past them both anyway. So Bobby Verdon Rowe in third place. Just ahead of him, Jamie Campbell Walter, and ahead of him, the leader, Gavin Cooper. Well, that's been meteoric progress from the back of the grid for Verdon Rowe. Flapping in the breeze, Steve Guglielmi's bonnet, not much left of it, and what there is doesn't seem inclined to stay attached to the car. The Battle of the Hyphens. Inside goes Verdon Rowe, Campbell Walter yields second place. Verdon Rowe to second, Campbell Walter down to third. And Campbell Walter will be watching Verdon Rowe very closely now for a chance to try and come back at him. Mark Preston on the move as well. He's passed Peter Wheeler and a handful of others, having a very, very good third section to this race. Steve Cole still going despite his troubles. Oh no, off into the gravel. And he joins the already abandoned car of Alistair McKeever. Well, the yellow flags were out, but I wonder, no, the red flags do come out indeed, ending the race there with far too much machinery in the runoff areas. Gavin Cooper winning that third part from third and row. Martin Short coming in in ninth. The second half of the TVR Tuscan Challenge season has seen the championship lead of Ian Flux slowly whittled away by the man of the moment, Bobby Verdon Rowe. Well, they'll be appearing in the main race. The top six in qualifying go through automatically to the front six slots on the grid. For everyone else, there's extra mileage in the qualifying race. Seventh fastest in qualifying and therefore on the front of the grid here, Colin Blower, just alongside him, Tim Hood in the black and yellow machine. We ride with number 61, Richard Martin. We have views from his car as they leave the grid. And a good start by Blower. Colin Blower with a great deal of experience in these machines. Hasn't been quite as much on the front running pace in 1997 as he would have liked and most would have expected. But here in the last couple of races and perhaps now at Alton Park, a chance to see the Colin Blower of old. Streaming down the avenue, all safely through the left-hander at Cascades. The tail of the field has gone by, but here comes Martin Short. He blew an engine in qualifying, didn't do the requisite number of laps, and as a result had to start from the back of the field with a 10-second penalty. Already he has the headlights switched on in his hopes of moving up the order. Exiting the Shell Oils corner, just ahead of us there is Mark Preston. First and second, the front two men from the grid, Colin Blower and Tim Hood. Through the chicane at Fulstons they go, and then starting to climb, power all the way over the crest here at Hilltop, plunging downhill, the long, fast approach to Nickerbrook. Once a flat-out right-hand corner, but now with the chicane, Troy Dunlop there, the number four machine right behind our camera car. As they exit Fulston, starting to climb, bearing left up Clay Hill, still climbing as they come under full power, under braking here for the long double apex right-hander at Druids. Through they go, clouds of dust from the dry circuit. And then under the bridge, again, heavy braking, changing down and plunging over the top of the hill at Lodge Corner, down into Deer Leap. Accelerating hard as soon as the car is stable and will take the power across the start-finish line. And Richard Martin using all the revs he can, mustering every single one of the 460 brake horsepower from the AJP V8s in these identical TBR Tuscans. Well, with their control tyres, identical engines, identical chassis, and equally talented drivers, these are a real masterpiece to watch. TVR's thundering noise, enormous speed, and the closeness of the racing really makes this challenge such a favourite with the spectators.
Colin Blower bearing the scars of some damage there on the right rear corner of the car. Great swathe of silver tape holding it all together. But he's holding it all together at the moment under relentless pressure from Tim Hood. The number 26 machine, the black car with the yellow on the rollover cage. And you can see how hard Hood was trying the back, stepping out as he snatched another gear under full power, chasing up the hill behind Blower. Third is Preston. Fourth is our cameraman, Richard Martin. Just the telltale puffs of smoke from locked up tyres there as everybody leaves the braking to the final moment as they come into the chicane at Nickerbrook. And there is Martin Short picking his way through the traffic now. It's a long way to the front, but every place he picks up here, he'll be closer to the front of the main race. So short there he is, headlamps ablaze, looking to take another place here. Does so successfully. James Stevenson sees him coming in the mirrors. Little wave there, cavalier arm out of the cockpit, gesture from Martin Short. And he appreciates that although he is racing these guys for position, they know that in truth he is one of the true front runners and all they will do is hold him up, potentially spoil a good race for him and for somebody else. So they're letting him through. And that's the sort of gentlemanly gun luck that you come to expect from the TVRs. These guys all take their racing very seriously indeed, but they also believe in the sporting atmosphere of the challenge, and that's the sort of thing that we like to see. Again, down under braking, changing right the way down the gearbox, hugging the inside curving here in this banked right-hand corner. Long, looping Shell Oils corner, accelerating fast, and then just straightening up to brake for Fulstons. Avoid really thumping the kerbs on the exit, they'll upset the car a great deal. Here comes the leader then, Colin Blower now with some advantage, three or four car lengths from Tim Hood. Mark Preston right with him. And then Steve Gullielmi has moved up into fourth position. The black nose of his car, the blackened flames, showing that he has passed our cameraman. Well, Martin Short moving up the field, Matt Doman just ahead in the pink car, his next target may well meet our cameraman, Richard Martin, in his progress rearwards down through the order. He may even see Tim Hood, Hood very sideways there, two wheels on the curves and the broadside slide coming out of Druids. Hood's not careful, that may be the end of him. Well, short now, sizing up Doman as they go into Deer Leap. A couple of cars ahead. There is the very obvious number 19 of Grant Tromans. Here is the battle for second place then. Tim Hood, 26, Mark Preston, 55 behind him. Preston really pushing hard. Steve Gugliami now clear in fourth place and chasing down this second place battle for all he's worth. Behind him, Steve Cole is now up into fifth place. There is Cole. And here is single-seater racer Amanda Whitaker. Well, she can barely see where she's going halfway through the race. See the back of the car in very serious damaged condition. She making her way slowly back to the pits. Well, another race and her normal race car awaits her, but a battle for second place here between Tim Hood and Mark Preston continues to enthrall the spectators. So Colin Blower now just arriving at the Nickerbrook chicane. Tim Hood and Mark Preston very close together. Gully Almy next in. Then Richard Martin with Steve Cole in close attendance. Troy Dunlop, then Grant Tromans trying desperately to outbreak the number nine, Gavin Cooper, right ahead of him. Tromans now with Martin Short right behind him. And Short will be looking to pick up both of those places if he can. Ed Sharp out of the race. Car number 60, only five laps into the race was as far as he got. So through come the lead bunch. And let's look back for Martin Short. Well, short, <laughs> Troman's not giving up the place that easily. These two are actually regular rivals. Short is now up towards the sharp end of the grid, and it will become more and more difficult for him to pick up the positions. Little wave out of the cockpit from Mark Preston as they turned into Old Hall, acknowledging, I think, a gentlemanly piece of driving by Tim Hood just ahead of him. And now we ride once more with our cameraman, Richard Martin. Martin staring down the yellow rear end of Steve Gullielmi's car. Gullielmi black at the front, yellow at the rear. Very confusing if you're seeing him coming or going. 
Martin staying in contact, like the others, I'm sure, running out of tyres and brakes. Very wayward Gavin Cooper exiting Shell Oils. He seems to be running out of tyres, running out of options as well as Martin Short lunges down the inside. Cooper holds him off, but I wonder for how long Gavin Cooper in quite some discomfort having ricked his neck in practice. Well, Martin Short looking around both sides at the same time as they come down to Nickerbrook, outbreaks himself, goes across the grass, but he pulls over, points to Cooper, says, right, you go past, I picked up that place unfairly there. And of course, by missing out the chicane, you really do pick up quite some advantage. Short, again, gentlemanly conduct being shown. And I'm sure Gavin Cooper will battle him for the place all the way to the flag as a result. Well, the chequered flag awaits Colin Blower now. The battle behind him will, it seems, be decided in favour of Tim Hood. Hood holds on to second place. Yes, crosses the line just ahead of Mark Preston in third. Gulli Elmi, Steve Cole and Troy Dunlop, the other top six finishers. Martin Shaw going through the picture there. He would normally have been penalised for 10 seconds for running over the Nick Brooks chicane, but because he allowed his competitor back ahead of him, he was not. But on the warm-up lap for the second race, Martin Short was out of the action anyway. His differential failed, and that may well have been a legacy of that little grassy moment. Here is the man of the moment, Bobby Burdenrow. All right there, Bobby.